Cybercrime knows no age group. Kids always push boundaries, offline, but also online. It's like a constant struggle to not do that and like uh, keep on the right path. And I didn't know that I was stepping into an FBI raid. And it was mine. The word hacker is really interesting, right? There's so many different meanings, and it means something different to everybody. It's always the motivation and the ethics of a person. So it's a bit like the Wild West out there. It's interesting, but a lot of illegal things can happen without anyone really paying attention or noticing it. I think hacking can be a slippery slope into cybercrime, mostly because it's so closely related to each other. Hacker is not somebody who identifies a vulnerability in a system, keeps that knowledge to himself, and then exploits it for personal financial gain. That's not a hacker. We already have a word for that. That's a criminal. Cybercrime knows no age group. And unfortunately, kids being naive and vulnerable, they're the majority of, of what gets turned into that cybercrime group. After we arrested a disproportionate amount of young offenders in the National High Tech Crime Unit, the Dutch police took the initiative to start coming up with answers in the form of the Cyber Offender Prevention Squads. So within this squad, we work together with the private companies, with the public sector and teachers to make a start by making kids more aware and informing them about what is illegal and what are the consequences for themselves and also for victims. And in this way, they are at least able to make an informed choice, whether they become a criminal or a ethical hacker. So we decided to develop Reboot Camp, which is a offline intervention. And that is a workshop of a day. And in that day, the kids are being invited who are really technically able. They have a complete day where they learn everything about hacking, about how to use your skills in a good way without breaking the law. Ik ben een paar maanden geleden naar Reboot Camp geweest. Dat is een programma georganiseerd door de politie. En daar hebben we allemaal verschillende workshops gehad over mensen die vertelden over hun banen en wat ze deden. En we kregen ook nog een paar uitdagingen om in te hacken op bepaalde systemen die zij dan uh, ons klaargezet hadden. Voor mij betekent hacken dat je spullen gebruikt die niet bedoeld, op de manier hoe ze niet bedoeld zijn. Ik denk wel dat ik uh, mijn skills later om kan zetten in mijn werk. Dat ik er wel echt geld mee kan verdienen. Ik uh, weet nog niet precies hoe, maar ik kom er denk ik wel achter. We want to preserve talent and we want to prevent cyber offenders from reoffending in the near future. So we also have developed something we call HackRides. The HackRide program is developed for first offenders between 12 and 30 years old. The purpose of the project is for tech-savvy offenders to teach them how they can use their IT skills in a good way. And um, by that we try to prevent them from reoffending in the future. Like you have to have a moral compass or else everything is permissible and everything is controlled by that endorphin rush. Hacking and addiction go hand in hand. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because anybody with an addictive personality can easily get addicted to an adrenaline rush. And that's exactly what hacking provides is that, that, that biofeedback, that rush. It's like a constant struggle to not do that and like uh, keep on the right path. I'm a full-time penetration tester. My role is mostly technical penetration testing, web applications, internal network for large organizations and government. I get the opportunity to almost every week change to a different company, try different systems. So for me, that fills the rush for me because I, I can already legally do it. And I think this career choice is a really nice career choice to have. So the definition between black hat, gray hat, and a white hat hacker. The white hat hacker is the one that does it fully legally, has the contract, has the company approved that they can hack it. 
Then there's the black hat, which is exactly the opposite of a white hat. You just do it for yourself. You don't care about legal consequences. Mostly it's for like the money, but it can also be for the fame. And then there's the gray area where it's kind of like, you're maybe doing it for the good cause, but maybe not with somebody's permission. It's kind of like, okay, you're doing the good thing, but also you're breaking into somebody's system. I was a lost child. You know, I had a lost mom. So hacking became a, a means and a way for me to heal from powerlessness. I didn't even think, hey, look, I'm about to step into a whole new role in my life as an insider threat. Do this right now. Hey, what's up, everybody? And I see this, this like black van, and I just think in the back of my mind that it's the cleaning crew. Freeze! And I'm just freaking out because there's guns pointing at me, okay? So yeah, that's it all came came tumbling down just like that. Gosh, rebuilding my life after, you know, being imprisoned for 11 years. That was that was difficult. I didn't really have any sense of direction leading up to getting out. So, it was the hardest thing that I could possibly face. Can a black hat become a white hat? I totally believe this person right now does not do any criminal activities. I'm totally with you. No problem with that. But put that person into a tough situation, I'm not sure if he's really that strong to step away from that and not fall back into it. I know several people who have made that change. Uh, it all depends on the person's motivation. You know, give enough, give enough stimulation or enough pain or motivation, people are gonna change. Kids always push boundaries offline, but also online. As law enforcement, we should be there from the start on with prevent interventions and not only with arrest and pursue because that's just really a waste of time and money and talents.